freedom, man. That's what it's all about. You've got to groove on freedom, like the good book says. listening to what on earth is happening this show will discuss the topics of human consciousness mind control natural law the occult and all issues that affect the freedom of the people of earth what on earth is happening will endeavor to shine light upon the darkness of our world and to offer empowering solutions to the problems we face as humanity approaches its critical moment of choice. And now, here is your host, Mark Passio. Welcome, one and all. You're watching What on Earth is Happening. I'm your host, Mark Passio. My website, whatonearthishappening.com. Ladies and gentlemen, government is slavery. Always has been, is now, always will be. Whether you understand that or not, it's still true. And here on What on Earth is Happening, we are ending slavery one mind at a time. Welcome one and all, and thank you for tuning in today. Today is Sunday, March 12th, 2023. This is show number 268 of What on Earth is Happening. Thank you for being here today. We have a great show lined up. I'm going to have my special guest, Jeff Hipoff, from the One Great Work Network a little bit later on the show. Really looking forward to speaking with Jeff. Uh, Jeff is a great content creator on One Great Work Network, and we're going to be talking to him about doing the great work today. That being said, I have a few uh, announcements to go over, as always at the beginning of the show. And please do remember, what on earth is happening in general is a tapestry of information. These shows are not really meant to be taken in individually. They are part of an overall tapestry that starts at show number one. So if you are, are a new viewer to this podcast, you should not start from this point. You should go back to show number one and you should listen to all of the podcasts in order, starting from number one without skipping around at your own pace. And that is how you gain maximum value from this podcast because there is prerequisite knowledge to understand in the earliest podcasts, and then we build upon that knowledge as we go. So this is meant to be taken in like a college course. You cannot simply skip to the end and pick it up from there. Uh, you will not be gaining prerequisite knowledge in the earlier episodes. So that being said, let's jump over to my slides for today. <clears throat> Thank you to Will Keller, as always, for the great uh, title cards that he provides each week. Again, today, Jeff, Jeff Hipoff of the One Great Work Network, our special guest. We're running on a streamlined two-hour format for this season. Perhaps uh, once I'm set up in my new environment, my move is going pretty smoothly so far. It's going to be completed in less than a couple weeks probably. And um, once it is complete, um, hopefully within about a month or so, uh, I'll have my new studio set up and I'll be broadcasting the show from there. Um, probably for the duration of this season, at least we'll stick with that two hour format, but more likely than not, if everything goes smoothly and as planned, I'll be going back to a three hour format next season of what on earth is happening starting in January. So we're still on a six month, two hour schedule for this season, January through June. And uh, like I said, if everything goes really smoothly with the setup of my new studio and, uh, 
Perhaps if I have a producer on duty next season, we'll go back to a three-hour show with the full setup. How to become the true media is racing toward us, actually. We're going to be opening enrollment April 1st, Saturday, April 1st. That's coming up only in, what, three weeks? So... Uh, if you want to take the How to Become the True Media Technology Skill Sharing Seminar, you're going to want to enroll as early as possible. Enrollment begins April 3rd. This is a 23-week technology skill share seminar. I host it on the Telegram platform every Monday evening from 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. Eastern Time, Eastern U.S. Time, from Monday, July 10th to Monday, December 11th, 2023, for a total of 23 class sessions. There is limited space available in the seminar this year, so do not wait till the last minute to enroll. Enrollment, again, opens Saturday, April 1st, 2023, at midnight. For more information and for the general uh, aspects of technology that this seminar covers, please visit the seminar website, howtobecomethetruemedia.com. Once again, howtobecomethetruemedia.com. Great news on the um, presentation of Two Masks, Same Face, The Dark Occult Origins of Nazism and Communism, what is going to be certainly the biggest work that I have put out probably since the Uh, Demystifying the Occult Seminars, and of course my Natural Law Seminar. This is going to be a special all-day presentation. It's an all-day event, and we have locked it in. We did have to go to a different venue. I was not accepted and allowed to speak at the original venue that we had planned when they found out that I was an anarchist, of all things. Uh, Imagine a person that Uh, does not want violence in the world, that wants a voluntary society based on voluntary interaction, that doesn't want coercion, violence, or duress. And I'm the one who's told that I don't have a voice. But anyway, we did find a very amicable place in Pennsylvania. So the... um, The presentation, Two Masks, Same Face, we are moving the date and the venue. It is going to take place Saturday, October 21st, 2023 at the Exton Hotel and Conference Center in Exton, Pennsylvania. Uh, These... uh uh, the, the, the organizers there were very easy to work with. We got it set up very quickly, and we are locked in and confirmed for October 21st, 2023 at the Exton Hotel and Conference Center in Exton, Pennsylvania. This is a beautiful hotel. We have an awesome conference room set up that holds 300 people for this event. So I will be able to actually up the private invitations to 300. And I can tell you right now that the invitations to Two Masks, Same Face, The Dark Occult Origins of Nazism and Communism will be available on May 1st, 2023, one month after the opening of the How to Become the True Media Seminar. May 1st, 2023, we are going to start opening the uh, private invitations that are going to be available for a donation on What on Earth is Happening donation gifts for this all-day event. So I will be announcing that on the website and um, putting a link to where people can Um, donate to attend this presentation, this all-day event, live and in person in Exton, Pennsylvania, this October 21st. I'm very excited about this. The the presentation is going to be a mind-blower. People uh, really are unaware of a lot of these connections that I'm going to bring forward and expose. And uh, you know, it's going to be an all-day scholarly event. So you're not going to want to miss this one if you're anywhere in the area or even if you're traveling from afar. Uh, I hope to see people from all over the country and possibly even other countries at this event. It's going to be at a beautiful hotel so people can stay. We're going to have a um, 
a uh, reception afterward, like a, 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 a get, just a get together uh, after the event is over. Anybody that wants to stay can stay and uh, hang out and talk, you know, um, and, you know, and just, uh, you know, network and socialize into the evening. So I think it really worked out in the end, and I'm very happy. As a matter of fact, I want to talk with Jeff about it because he was absolutely instrumental in securing the venue. So uh, we're going to be, be bringing that up in just a little bit. Moving on, uh, there is a new section on What on Earth is Happening donation gifts, and the category is called Technology Donations. And what this is is a way <clears throat> for people to donate piecemeal uh, in a crowdsourced way for larger or more expensive technology items that I require. So there it is there, a link under gift categories, and on the categories page you could see their technology donations. Now, the item that was up there was a presentation laptop. We have, uh, I have the laptop now, ladies and gentlemen, so I'm actually broadcasting the slides from the new laptop. So thank you wholeheartedly to everyone who donated to make this happen. This is going to be the laptop that I'm going to present, the Two Masks, Same Face, Dark Occult Origins presentation on. So it is actually secured. Uh, I have it. I'm using it right now. Thank you to everyone who donated for that item. There is an additional item up there now. Let's take a look and see how that is doing. So give me one moment. And I'll switch over to my web browser real quick. So we can just take a look at how the donations are going for the next computer that is required here, uh, which is going to run the, the actual show in the studio. I'm going to retain this computer as my own creative computer, and I'm going to set up a Mac studio in my permanent studio in my new location. Uh, I apologize. I'm just uh, switching over to my laptop again. There we go. So this is... Uh, a web browser in real time. I'm going to click categories here and then I'll click donation uh, technology donations and here you see there is one item on the technology donation page on donation gifts. It's a uh, donation toward a Mac studio <clears throat> for the What on Earth is Happening show. And so far, we have raised $1,300 out of the 4000 required to get this Mac Studio. So <clears throat> thank you to everyone who donated. And please, if you are able to contribute toward this item, you can make a donation right here, uh, ranging from $50 to $500 and any denominations of $50 increments in between. Uh, hopefully, we can raise the... Uh, the donations to secure this item in the next couple of weeks, and uh, I will be able to set it up in the new studio location. So thank you to everyone who has donated so far. We're a uh, little less than halfway there, maybe about one-third of the way there to secure this Mac studio. So thank you to everyone who has already donated. Let's move back to <coughs> the slides. Don't forget one great work network running strong with 72 awesome content creators, one of which is my guest today at OneGreatWorkNetwork.com. Please check it out. Please donate to the content creators. They're doing a hell of a job making some of the greatest content on the internet regarding natural law, regarding objective morality, regarding the occult and the situation of tyranny that humanity finds itself in, you won't find any better information anywhere online than OneGreatWorkNetwork.com. Please do check it out, and please do support the wonderful content creators who are part of this network. Also, check out my Band.Video channel. I've been very busy <clears throat> with the move to the new location, so I've not yet... Uh, put any new videos out. There are two still up there. I'm going to complete the natural law seminar hopefully this week, uh, you know, one one uh, video at a time. 
out of the uh, three-part series. The channel is at band.video slash channel slash mark dash Passio. Check it out. Hopefully we can uh, establish a good uh, viewership there and a good uh, hit count for the videos. So check out my band.video channel. Don't Tread on Philly hosts its monthly happy hour on the second Wednesday of every month. Uh, I attended it this past Wednesday. It was awesome. Again, a great crowd came out. Just uh, some of the best uh, freedom-oriented uh, people in the whole Delaware Valley region of the country, uh, the whole tri-state area here. And... Um, <clears throat> We meet every second Wednesday of the month at The Dive, which is on East Passyunk Avenue in South Philadelphia. The second Wednesday happy hour is always free to attend. And for more information on the group Don't Tread on Philly, check out their website, donttreadonphilly.com. Also, Don't Tread on Philly on Facebook. The What on Earth is Happening IPFS project is going strong. Three nodes have been created. We are working to uh, basically make them as um, stable as possible. One of them is quite stable at this point. Uh, another couple have to be stabilized a little bit better. IPFS is a sort of a tricky protocol, and uh, you know the 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 desktop client isn't super robust, unfortunately, but it is working, and we have three nodes online, and we're looking to put up more nodes uh, this year. I said the goal was five for this entire year. We're going to make that goal, no doubt about it. And uh, to the people who are waiting in the queue for me to get a hold of you, I'm just going through a move right now. Be patient. I will get to it. I will get back to all of that work. Uh, just bear with me for the time being. If you're interested in the What on Earth is Happening IPFS project, this is to make my content censorship proof and uh, available always on the IPFS network which is a, a distributed and decentralized platform. Um, you require 200 megabits or greater of bandwidth in the upstream direction. If you don't have that, please don't inquire about this project. If you do have at least 200 megabits upstream in the upload direction, check out whatonearthishappening.com slash IPFS, and you could fill out the form there with preliminary um, requirements and instructions. To call into today's show with my special guest, Jeff Hipoff, please visit whatonearthishappening.com slash call, or if you're already watching on the show page of What on Earth is Happening, you could even scan the QR code that's there or click the link, and that will join you into our Telegram call-in room. When I do call on you to take calls, please, please be ready to unmute yourself from the large blue microphone icon at the bottom of your call window in Telegram. Not the main window with your chats, but the call window when you join the call. You can unmute yourself from there once I unmute you from the server side. ARC 2.0 still available, still going strong. I'm still getting ARCs almost every day. Um... The directions have been upgraded for my new mailing address, so if you're concerned about that, you don't need to be. Just, uh, I would say, at this point, do not send any more ARCs to my old mailing address. The new mailing address is in the new document at whatonearthishappening.com slash ARCs, so when you go online and fill that out and you get the, uh, the instructions, <clears throat> it is up to date. So I would say... If you're concerned about that, just go to the page again, fill out your information again, and re-download the instructions, and you'll have the most updated instructions. The ARC is a hard drive or solid-state drive, whatever you send to me. You send a storage device to me, and I'll fill it up with 26,000 audio files, 9,500 digital books, and 3,400 digital videos, all from my personal archive of research from when I've started researching all of this information. So that's what the ARC 2.0 drive is. Do check it out, whatonearthishappening.com slash ARC. If you want hard copies of my presentations or promotional items such as t-shirts, stickers, um, <clears throat> coasters, keychains, 
buttons, etc. Also, technology donation uh, category is there. You can get the One Great Work Collection Solid State Drive. Awesome t-shirts available for both men and women. Visit gifts.whatonearthishappening.com. This is What on Earth is Happening Donation Gifts. The website, gifts.whatonearthishappening.com. Again, that is where uh, the enrollment will take place for How to Become the True Media. And we will open May 1st um, private um, uh, invitations uh, in in return for a donation for Two Masks, Same Face, The Dark Occult Origins of Nazism and Communism. Uh, all of that will be available at gifts.whatonearthishappening.com. That's where the seminar is available. That's where the presentation, the upcoming presentation, Two Masks, Same Face, will be available. So we're opening up enrollment for How to Become the True Media at the beginning of April, and we're opening up uh, the donations for Two Masks, Same Face, uh, private personal attendance in person on May 1st. If you prefer instead to make a straight donation to the What on Earth is Happening and One Great Work Network causes, you can visit whatonearthishappening.com slash donate, and you could donate something like 12 different ways, six or nine cryptocurrencies, something like that, Cash App, GPay, tech donation via Amazon wish list for smaller items, uh, and uh, check and money order. Those are all the announcements that I have for today, so let me just get prepared for my guest. Let's shoot over here temporarily. Let me get my headset on. Let's make sure Jeff is ready to roll, and we'll get started. <clears throat> all right. Okay, Jeff, you can go ahead and turn your camera on and unmute your mic. Excellent. Hey, Mark, can you hear me? Yes, I can. You're coming in loud and clear. Let me get you set up here in, uh, in window. There we go. There you are. All right. And let's get your lower third on, and I'm going to read your bio, and we'll get going. Hold on one moment. I apologize. My tab got closed with your bio. Just bear with me one moment. All right, there it is. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Jeff Hipoff is an anarchist, freedom activist, podcaster, engineer, and local event organizer. On a daily basis, Jeff relentlessly strives to learn about everything related to higher consciousness, self-improvement, and freedom for all beings. Firmly grounded and ever conscious that without a strong understanding of objective moral foundations, human beings pursuing a more free existence are guaranteed to fall short of our potential. Absolutely. Jeff is adamantly solutions-oriented and focused on real-world actions that move humanity toward a state of freedom and anarchy. In 2020, Jeff started the Go Off podcast and GoOff.com website, which quickly turned into a source for foundational knowledge and real-world solutions that anyone can enact to improve their lives and the lives of those around them. Jeff is extremely honored to be a member of the One Great Work Network and, and to be alongside so many other enlightened beings who are actively helping ourselves and our neighbors out of our current state of slavery. Ladies and gentlemen, one great work content creator and my special guest today, Jeff Hipoff. Jeff, welcome to What on Earth is Happening. Thanks, Mark. It's an honor to be here. 
absolutely glad to have you here. Jeff, you've been a, uh, a tour de force, actually, in uh, the One Great Work Network. Uh, your, your content has been really awesome. It, it shines brightly. It's very rooted in objective morality and true anarchy. And uh, most of all, you've been a tremendous help for me uh, personally and in my work with what on earth is happening uh, as you were the individual who uh, secured the venue and I want to say to all the other event organizers you guys did your absolute greatest as well so I want to say thank you to all of of you uh, everybody who um, uh, uh, you know uh, tried to help secure a venue uh, Jeff, you found this awesome venue uh, out in Exton, Pennsylvania, uh, and uh, it's really worked out. We locked it in, and I'm really excited and looking forward to uh, delivering the presentation there. So um, why don't you tell everybody about your background and how you got started in doing this type of work and this type of uh, educational outreach? Sure. Yeah. I'm uh, a small-town kid in southeast PA. Um, nothing special about my upbringing. Uh, the, the best thing that my parents did for me was to always make sure that I was an individual thinker and didn't just do everything uh, everybody else was doing as I was growing up. And uh, they never pushed me into politics any which way. They never pushed any religions onto me. So that's probably the best thing they did um, for me as well as instilling a drive to educate myself and just continue to learn. Um, I... Uh, from high school, then I attended college as a mechanical engineering major, graduated from there, and I've been working in engineering in a couple of different industries since then. Um, as far as uh, me getting involved in content creating and uh, doing the great work, uh, it was really started after I graduated from college, uh, being in an engineering uh, curriculum. You are very busy seven days out of the week, and when that stopped, I was pretty much bored intellectually. So I was making money for the first time in my life and had a ton of free time, didn't have any homework to do. So I started reading books and more books and <laughs> how do I handle money? How should I live? What's the best way to do that? Picking up different historical topics that I was interested in. And one thing led to another and um, I'm reading books such as uh, The Law by Frederick Bastiat, uh, Road to Serfdom by Hayek. Um, Hazlitt's Economics in One Lesson, Mainspring of Human Progress, Henry, Gra Henry, Henry Grady Weaver. And uh, from there, I, I stumbled on your work as well, as many others have. And, uh, and um, in 2020, I kind of started my podcast just as a, a fun thing to do um, when you couldn't go out and socialize the way you wanted to normally pre-COVID era. Um, so it was just a fun thing to do with me and my friends. And the more confidence I got in putting my voice out there, and the more knowledge I gained over time, um, I decided to uh, start teaching others what I had learned and what I uh, recognize as um, the only way to move into a free society, um, and that is education first and foremost. Absolutely. One of the things that you mentioned is that your parents encouraged uh, free thinking. That is something that a lot of people do not have the uh, benefit of. And um, that's something that, you know, when you do have it, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a tremendous motivational factor because if you're not really held back by limiting thought structures and things like, you know, uh, you know religion and, uh, you know, uh, ties to, to uh, you know, the mindset of government and authority, and at least if you're encouraged to strike out on your own path mentally, psychologically, uh, as far as information is concerned, uh, it's a big advantage and it's a big step up. So uh, that's something that I think is so important. And um, uh, I'd, I'd like you to speak to that dynamic a little bit because it's uh, it's an advantage that many people do not have and would, uh, you know, really like to um, have had earlier on in life. I know that really kind of wasn't my scenario. It was always, uh, you know, just go along, you know, things will work out, just, you know, uh, try to try to do the things that are expected of you, um, but when you have uh, you know kind of like that initial push that um, basically says you know go out and explore, be open minded, you know uh, take um, you know a free thinker's approach to the to the the entirety of the world, that kind of sets you up for really uh, a better understanding of what's going on. So uh, you know if you would like to speak to that dynamic, uh, like your take on that. 
Yeah, it's uh, it's a really healthy way to uh, approach and, and bring up a child for uh, for myself um, going through that specifically. And it's really up to you when you have that environment, when you have that teaching from your parents. Um, it's really up to you how far you go with it and how far you run. And um, to a, a other point you were talking about, um, uh, the main issue or the main message actually uh, from my mom that I can hear her echoing in my head now uh, it's uh, if you're all of your friends jumped off a bridge, would you jump off a bridge? Right. And as a kid, I would always answer no, and she would encourage me to answer no. However, uh, coming to a higher level of understanding now from when I was as a kid, the correct answer is, well, what's the bridge like? What's under the bridge? How high is it? Is it just going to go into a, a, a small pond, or is it going to be jagged rocks at the right. end? Um, so it's approaching a situation and uh, a social dynamic with a... Uh, with a, a mindset of thinking critically, thinking for yourself, first and foremost, maybe it's going to be a lot of fun or maybe you're going to fall to your death. Um, but without that critical thinking piece, uh, just to having a knee jerk reaction and following suit um, and saying no or saying yes, either which way, um, doesn't, doesn't do the, the consciousness, doesn't do yourself any justice to uh, personal growth. Um, so that's, that's some of the things that I've, I've uh, still ring in my head to this day from my childhood and, uh, and free thinking. Absolutely. Um, now, the you said that the uh, the pandemic was sort of like a big uh, awakening factor forward for you. Not that you really kind of weren't awake before that, but um, you know, what was the whole experience going through this uh, this total psyop um, like for you? And uh, you know, what kind of directions did did it push you in when that all you know jumped off? Yeah, it. Uh it was definitely the, the um, catalyst for me to start getting involved more and speaking out. It was just before then, it was just me speaking to my friends uh, one on one basis and my family one on one basis and not really putting my voice out there, not being involved in any really any community events or organizing any community events for sure. And uh, probably because it was so directly affecting my day to day life um, as a guy in, in my 20s, my social life since then has been destroyed. Um, with the general population now really only social with um, a few friends from college and just mainly the large uh, freedom oriented uh, communities here at Don't Tread on Philly and others in the local area. Um, but going through COVID was definitely the catalyst to get involved and start doing that and uh, start doing the great work. Um, but because it hit so personally at a personal level, maybe others in a more rural area who are knowledgeable but weren't as affected as me uh, living in the suburbs of Philadelphia. Um, and then some of the people in the city were even more greatly affected than I was. So it was, uh, it was a very different time because it, uh, I have a lot of friends in different areas. So I got different perspectives on how it impacted each other. Um, for me personally, I lost my job due to uh, the uh, requiring of the COVID injections. So I had to move jobs during this time. And um, that, that's not a pleasant experience. Um, when you've done absolutely nothing wrong, you're just not agreeing to change your body. And uh, that makes you the bad man and uh, getting you fired, essentially. So it was a, a, a definitely a catalyst to start action. And uh, just going along with the status quo um, doesn't seem like the status quo is going in any positive direction. That's right. You know, uh, when has conventional wisdom ever been wise? Uh, when has the herd ever been right? You know, uh, this is what I ask people all the time. What makes you think that, you know, if your thinking is in line with the rest of the bulk of humanity, that you're, you're thinking the right thoughts, that you're thinking in a wise direction and heading in a wise direction? You know, almost always it's the exact opposite. Um, so... Let me ask you this. When you were, um, you know, realizing that um, things were very, very badly heading in the wrong direction, uh, what was what, what was the thing that made you finally say, I must speak out, I must start um, putting information out into the world about what I have come to know? And I'd like you to speak to the, um, the logistics of doing that. Like when you decided to do that, what was it like going through that process? Was it a big learning curve for you? Was technology a stumbling point? Did that come more naturally? Speak to those dynamics for a moment. Sure. Um, the first part is uh, when I. Uh, what was the catalyst to start actually speaking out? It was mainly because 
so many people who I was uh, in contact with on a day-to-day basis, my friends, family, people who I love, people who I care about, uh, fell uh, victim and uh, just completely followed suit with the mainstream narrative of everything going on. And uh, that really uh, got me angry, pissed me off, and uh, uh, lit a fire under my ass to start speaking out. So that was the main thing, seeing the people who I love and care about um, just harming themselves and, uh, and fighting for the whatever stories that were being pushed out by the propaganda news and the governmental news. And uh, so that point forward, um, I was very adamant with them in person. And then uh, I realized so many others uh, needed that hear that message as well. Um, and uh, so to get started with that, I started a website started a podcast. Uh, Before then, I never created a website. I never had a podcast of any sort. Uh, Being a mechanical engineering by uh, by, uh, education uh, and having some computer programming classes in high school and uh, being good with CAD and other such uh, automation programming, um, industrial automation, I was pretty tech savvy before I got started. And um, it wasn't a terribly steep learning curve. I took a couple of online classes to learn WordPress uh, to learn how to put out a podcast through syndication, um, different recording softwares, different hardware. Um, so for me, it was probably a month to a month and a half process to get everything done up and, and hit the ground running. Um, but since then, it's uh, times have changed and new technology is always coming out, new ways to do it, better ways to do it, uh, creating a more efficient standard operating procedure, etc. And uh, I will say I was in Mark's, uh, I was in your how to become the true media class last year in 2022. And uh, it, I learned so much. Even though I had a podcast and a website and everything before that, I learned so much uh, from that the 23 weeks in that course last year. Your um, learning process was highly accelerated. I mean, uh, for you to uh, pick that stuff up in only a month or two is uh, utterly amazing. Um, you know, uh, again, you did have somewhat of a technical background. You... you um, uh, do what I actually went to school for. I went to school for mechanical engineering, dropped out, and um, went into business with uh, with my cousin uh, in an internet business uh, early on. Uh, but uh, you actually graduated, went into the mechanical engineering field. And again, as you said, that gave you a little bit of a technical background, and you had some technical prowess from using the uh, computer-aided drawing programs that are a big part of that field. So that um, kind of helped you, I guess, to learn the basic conceptual ideas of computing. Uh, Am I correct? That's correct. And uh, growing up, my dad has been in IT for 25 plus years. So I've built computers with him as a kid and watched him do it as well. And just uh, learned little things from from watching him work. Um, So that also helped. Now, Regarding the the technical aspect, people may uh, you know ask like why do we c- continue to hammer on this and continue to discuss this almost endlessly? And I bring this up with all of my guests anymore. Um, I want you to uh, give your take regarding how d- do you see technology involved with the great work and making the great work move forward how important is it how integrated and and intertwined with with the concept of freedom is it um how how do you see people uh understanding that learning about it you know moving forward in their understanding of technology and its importance in in that regard yeah i uh you can look back through history to actually find that answer best i think Um, There is a woman who is an elderly woman now, but she was raised uh, in Austria, I believe, um, and was a a young girl when Hitler started moving into Austria in World War II and prior. And she said the first thing that Hitler did was took all their guns and had voluntary uh, turning in of their guns, and he mandated a radio be put in everybody's home. He recognized in Gables and everybody else and and Himmler recognized that change, in their case, negative, bad, evil change, starts with the mind and what the mind consumes. And so having the radio in everybody ha- everybody's house, they're going to be tuned in as much as possible and, and, and addicted to the propaganda. So it is mainly just a tool technology. And in the modern age, the uh, video format in particular is the, the latest and furthest progression of that. Uh, before we get to any brain chip implants, I guess. 
um, or wearable devices uh, on our bodies all the time. Um, but as it stands, the video formatting is the, the most critical and most useful and the most uh, direct tool to affect change in the world. And it, all that change is uh, starts in the minds of people. And uh, if the work isn't being done, uh, put out there, the great work not being done and put out there, they're only going to have uh, the propaganda from the government and any other dross or distractions um, that's pushed out as well. So it is, it is a, certainly a tool for change because it directly affects your thoughts and the ideas that go into your mind. And that's where all real world action and change come from. So it is critical that we learn that, utilize it to the best of our ability and, and do the same to fight the, uh, the, non -stream, the, the non-stop mainstream messaging uh, that they use on the TV and Internet. It's something that um, everywhere I go in person with people, I've been bringing up more and more and asking them, if you don't understand how to speak out via the Internet to a mass amount of people, not just with your voice in person, speaking to a few people who happen to be around you in person bodily, uh, if you don't understand how to use the technology to amplify your voice, your message, your philosophy, how do you expect it's going to propagate and be picked up by other people? You know, propagation and propaganda are the, the, the same root words, you know, and, uh, and that's, to, that's to say that propaganda is not always bad or evil. You know, what, what we do by putting the word out is propagandizing. We are propagating our message, you know, putting the word out to other people in the hopes that it spreads. And that's the same techniques, the same methods as the evildoers of the world, except we're doing it for the right reason and we're putting out correct information and we're trying to inspire people to be more moral instead of less moral. So, um, you know, I, I think it's just great when people really have that fundamental understanding. And if they have a little bit of technical knowledge under their belt, they can really parlay that into something much greater in a quick amount of time, as was your case. But even if they don't have that kind of tech, techn technical background under their belt, um, if they take you know, basic introductory courses. There's tons of ways that they can do that. All kinds of visual learning courses all over the internet. If they take a guided seminar like I present, you know, that gives you an even greater opportunity to really dig pretty deep and, and have it be interactive directly with an expert, uh, you know, who has a lot of experience under uh, one's belt in doing this exact type of thing uh, when it comes to uh, information purveyance. So, um, yeah, thanks for your whole take on that. I think that that is it exactly, um, you know, how I see it. And we have to really get uh, people to have a much better understanding of how that really works because uh, that's such an integral part of the, the one great work that it can never be separated from it as far as I'm concerned. So, um uh, when you started your podcast, um, uh, what types of topics do you get into in the podcast? And uh, give us the general gist of what it's about, um, how the episodes are, are structured, uh, you know, what kind of uh, platforms you have it on, and what your l listening audience has been like so far. Sure. I, uh, I started off just taking uh, small local stories. I think one of my first episodes was on backyard chickens. Uh, some uh, family in rural Pennsylvania was getting harassed by the local township for having chickens in their yard and it wasn't spaced out properly off of the next neighbor's property or the road. And uh, just pointing out little inconsistencies there. And um, it was really uh, starting out with, with mental things. I had a couple early episodes talking about um, your content ratio, the amount of content you consume versus the amount of content you output, as well as another episode called uh, Your Information Bubble. Um, you know, many people have said, psychologists, sociologists have said that you are the sum of the five closest people to you in life, um, who you spend the most time with, the five, um, those five people. Um, and I kind of equated that to your top five most watched content online uh, is, is going to be who you express, um, taking all that in their channels, their websites, their, um, their media online, those are, you're going to be your five top influences mentally. And, uh, so that's kind of stuff where I started early on and I've slowly progressed, um, through last year and the year before a little bit 
um, looking at more complex topics, looking at more local topics as well. Um, but really always try to uh, leave the audience with a, a piece of information, a consistent message about natural law, about freedom, first and foremost, what that actually means. How do we get there? And at the end of each episode, hopefully I, I offer a piece of uh, advice, a piece of action that everyone can take to work towards um, that solution. And uh, piece by piece, whether that's buying us some time to educate more or something that we can start tomorrow in our own lives that will uh, serve as an example of others to follow. Excellent. Now, your your whole take is very solutions oriented. I know that. Um, you know, you're you're into um, you know local food and local food growing. Uh, you're you're into um, you know. Uh, well, obviously, as an engineer, I see behind you you have a uh, an Ender three D printer there. I think it looks like. You know, yep. um, uh, speak to some of uh, you know your grassroots solutions oriented approaches. Now we all obviously know the ultimate solution is understanding objective morality and teaching that to others, teaching natural law. Uh, but, you know, talk about some, uh, you know, in-person grassroots solutions as far as, uh, you know, being able to be uh, self-sustaining that you're personally involved in. Sure. Yeah. I, uh, in 2021, I had made a couple of raised beds in my backyard from free pallets that were uh, had a sign for free on the side of the road, chopped them up, made them into some raised beds, got some topsoil and some garden compost and uh, started growing stuff. Never grew anything before that, never raised to grow anything. Um, so I was just putting seeds in the ground, seeing what happened. Um, expanded that out in the backyard. And I have a very small twin home in, uh, in a suburb of, of Philly. Um, so not a lot of space, but uh, I said, fuck the grass. Uh, that's not doing anything for me and uh, just started putting soil down in the grass uh, in the yard and uh, keep expanding out the garden. Um, behind me, yeah, as an engineer, I work with 3D printers at an industrial scale uh, on my, for my day job, almost on a daily basis. And uh, this is a, a, a printer I've had for a number of years now, one of my printers. And um, it's, uh, it's really empowering to see an idea get modeled uh, using CAD software and then being able to export a, an STL file load it up in the printer, have that all set up and see a physical thing come out within a day, within a few hours, depending on the part. And uh, when in the past, before 3D printers, you would have to go to a machine shop, you would have to go an injection molding facility. And uh, it's very expensive, very slow. And for hobby projects or for um, any type of small manufacturing, it can be done now for a few hundred dollars in your office space or in your basement. Um, so uh, local manufacturing, local food growing. Um, I also have uh, uh, started a website with my friend Manish called Farm Finder PA. And we are, uh, it's just basically a, uh, a directory, community sourced of different food, local food listings, different farms, farmers markets, stores that sell food all within PA. And uh, that's really to uh, promote. Uh, where the farmers are because the general populace actually doesn't even know where their farmers are and where their food can come from they just by default follow everyone else and go to acme or giant or Shoprite, etc so that website is up and running and uh, growing every day with new listings across the state and that really all comes back to the energy that you put in is going to be the maximum potential that you can have out put in your life so if you're eating high quality local fruits and veggies and uh and taking in the right information, um, you you have all the, the foundational pieces set up and ready to go um, to see that manifest in the real world in your life. So those are some of the things that I'm working on more local level that I can affect change, have the personal connection with, um, in addition to the podcast and the impersonal connection over air, over the internet. So um, I guess in addition to that, I'll, I'll also promote the monthly documentary night that I have. Um, organizing once a month on the third Thursday called Inspire and Inquire. And uh, we've had two months so far here in 2023. And uh, it was really inspired by your previous uh, organizing and helping to organize the Truth, Freedom, Prosperity documentary movie nights that you had in Philadelphia a number of years ago. And uh, I wanted to start something similar, something that I can do. Um, just contact a local venue and uh, get a projector screen. Pretty simple, um, if I'm honest about it. 
Um, everybody can do that in their local area if they so choose. So I have food, I have local manufacturing, and I have uh, local spreading of ideas, in-person connections. Um, so yeah, like you said, very solutions oriented, very local community based oriented in addition to the global internet reaching podcast you know what Jeff uh, I've been meaning to actually promote that on the show I'm gonna um, actually put a, uh, a flyer into the slide rotation in the uh, event announcements for that because that's a, a great monthly meetup I've been really enjoying going to them your documentary selection is excellent as well and for people in this uh, you know basic tri-state area if you want to come out and check out uh, a really really awesome documentary evening uh, and discussion uh, at a really cool place. Um, you know, this is on the third Thursday of every month in Oaks, Pennsylvania, a suburb of Philadelphia. And uh, uh, the place is really cool. Arnold's Family Funhouse, where you host it uh, in their uh, theater projection room. And uh, this thing, this place has everything. Uh, they have, they have bowling, they have go karts, they have miniature golf, they have rock climbing, they have a bar. It's it's a, a really really cool uh, place for family entertainment. And uh, again, now Jeff is in there doing documentary screenings monthly. Um, and I, that's awesome that that was inspired by the uh, the old TFP uh, documentary nights. Uh, I remember those, and those were really kicking strong for a long while. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, I'll definitely start promoting that uh, as part of the weekly uh, event announcements. Um, so the next one is coming up this Thursday, right? So the, this Thursday, uh, what's the date? Uh, March the 16th. 16th. So if you're in the... Uh, Pennsylvania, uh, the Philadelphia suburbs around Oaks, Pennsylvania, which is around a little bit northwest of King of Prussia, Pennsylvania. Um, come on out to uh, the Inquire and Inspire uh, documentary screenings, third Thursday of each month at uh, Arnold's Family Fun Center in Oaks, Pennsylvania. Uh, do you have a website for that, or is that uh, it's on Eventbrite? Am I correct? Yeah, you can go to inquireandinspire.com, and it forwards you to the Eventbrite page, where each month we have a listing and event posted for the exact date and the information on the documentary we're showing each month. Awesome. At starting at 6 p.m. on the third Thursday. Awesome. Yeah, uh, we would love to see people come out. Uh, it's a great group of people that usually shows up. Again, very uh, thought-provoking documentaries and discussions following the documentary screening. Now, uh, st sticking to that for just one moment, um, I want to talk about the dynamic of, uh, you know, uh, where we live um, in southeastern Pennsylvania in the Philadelphia area. Um, now, uh I am making a move, and I am moving to a suburb of Philadelphia. And it's like, um, it's an interesting dynamic because you really do see uh, that, that consciousness is different in, in different areas. I'm not going to say that that means everybody's enlightened, but at least it, it is a little bit better as far as how, how people generally behave around each other and treat each other. I'm, I'm seeing that dynamic already, uh, not even, you know, completing the move, but it being like about, you know, three quarters complete. Um and uh, when I go up there, uh, I'm actually, you know, uh, seeing a completely different dynamic uh, around me than in the, the major part of the of the city in, uh, you know, Center City, Philadelphia or South Philadelphia. And, um, you know, people have said to me, you're the last person. Uh, I mean, I've had friends tell me you're the absolute last person that I would have ever expected would move to the suburbs. Uh, and uh, obviously I was forced into this move and decided, you you know, I'm going to, uh, you know, try to find a, a place where I can really focus on my work, set up a permanent studio so I don't, I'm not in a super tiny row home where I have to break down my studio every week. And that worked out. Uh, and, um, you know, I'm actually going to be very close to you. So, you know, uh, it, it it's a, it's a very different dynamic. I'd like you to speak to how you see, you know, Fully urban living versus suburban versus rural, if you have any experience with that. And, uh, you know, your take on it when it comes to how it affects consciousness. Yeah, so I've never lived completely rural in my uh, my upbringing. Um, I think uh, the town I grew up in was certainly more rural than where I am now. 
um, kind of in a metropolitan suburb. And uh, the, the going down and into the city over the years, hanging out with friends, seeing different places, different sections, um, in comparison and contrasting to where I live in the, the immediate area and towns, um, in the city, you're really just constantly bar- b- bombarded with propaganda, with advertising, with different radiation, with noise, um, with lights. And you don't really get to have any time off, any quiet time, any time to just sit and think and be to yourself and focus on anything in particular. It's just being, it's it's like a, you're living in a TikTok. Constant crowding constant, as well. Constant TikTok. Constant crowding yeah. of people and cars, traffic, etc. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, you can't you can't find any of space to, of of your own. I don't think um, too far away from any other individual um, or any other noise section of the city. Um, maybe there's places, but uh, that's largely the case in the in the really urban dense populated areas. In the suburbs, um, you're still close to that. Certainly, you're not. You don't have to drive five minutes to go to your neighbor's house. You can usually walk there or see it out your window. Um, but you do have. Your your more uh, secluded space, your more secluded time, um, easier to find those spaces, and you can really sit and focus and concentrate, and the stress levels just go way down, and that opens up so much more possibility. It's such a healthier state to be living in, and uh, it's it's way more easy, very much more easy, um, to get the stuff done that you want to get done. I think, and to have a, a healthy peace of mind and a healthy body at the same time. I definitely agree. Um, You know, friends of mine have told me that, you know, they're so much more productive when they, you know, go out into a uh, a non uh, fully urbanized center uh, around a little bit more nature. And it sort of clears their thinking. It focuses them. It enables them to get more done in less time. Uh, So that's what I'm hoping is going to be the dynamic when I complete my move and Again, get settled into a place where uh, I at least have uh, a separate room where I don't have to keep breaking down equipment, uh, and I'll be able to, you know, put on uh, an even more focused show there as well. So, um, let me get your take yeah, on well, Mark, Mark. When we were out the other day, um, we saw the guy had the Washington, George Washington shirt on. Yes. we would have never have seen that anyone oh, wearing that shirt amazing. in the city. What what exactly did that say? I forget. Uh, it said um, George Washington did not simply exercise his uh, right to free speech to def- defeat the British. He shot them with guns. Right. Yeah. Right. And uh, to, 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 and it, then it said support the Second Amendment underneath that. Right. Uh, you know, to see a shirt like that, you know, you, you'd never see that in Philadelphia. It would never, never happen anywhere. I'm one of the only people that I know that's, uh, you know, walked the city streets and gone in public places with pro Second Amendment T-shirts and, you know, see reactions on people's faces, you know. Um, right. But, uh, you know. You, you definitely see a different dynamic there, and um, there's definitely more pro-Second Amendment, pro-gun rights people out in, in those regions. And, uh, you know, again, one of the biggest uh, gun shows uh, in southeastern Pennsylvania in the whole state, I think, takes place in, in Oaks, which is just down the road from where we'll be. So, um, you know, it's definitely going to be an interesting dynamic there. I think, um, you know, my work may gain a little bit of traction with the, the local people there once they start, uh, you know, understanding it, uh, diving into it a little bit, hopefully. Uh, and, you know, we'll see what direction that goes in. But um, related to that, uh, speak to your take in general, uh, if you would, of uh, where you see consciousness heading. And, you know, do you see an awakening on the horizon? Do you see people moving in that direction? Do you see things moving in a very uh, more negative direction? Uh, wh- wh- what time frame do you see that people might still have to, to get their act together? Um, you know, wh- where do you see the whole dynamic going? Yeah, so that's... Um that's a big question. There's a lot of parts to that, but sure. to boil it down, it's not positive of where we're moving. I think a lot of people can get caught up in the numbers game, right? Where they say uh, and they see most uh, a lot of people in their uh, local communities who they hang out with, if it's in a little bubble, and they don't really branch out to the rest of the world or have any contact with the rest of the world in person for sure, and in their in their um, 
their information bubbles online. Um, if they can get caught up in that, then they think there is a movement happening, that they think the numbers are growing and that it is going in a positive direction. Um, however, in the grand scheme of things, you really need to look at a ratio of the population who are, are enlightened, who are recognizing this current state of humanity um, and the current state of the world we live in. Uh, the ratio is certainly not improving, and that is what counts. Those are the numbers that are what counts, not the quantity-wise. It's the ratio. Um, and as far as time is concerned, a lot of um, my actions and my uh, promotions are really just to buy time. I mean, yeah, uh, growing your own food is always important. Manufacturing things in your office is important and powerful to do. And uh, having local documentary nights is important. And educating, doing this work, your work, that, the great work uh, that so many content creators are doing now on the network. Um, those are all still very worthwhile times. But really only because we haven't had that proper upbringing. So many people around the world haven't and haven't learned these things at a proper time at a young age in life when really in a, in a free society, it would certainly be common knowledge to the youngest of our population for sure. And uh, to, to get to that level, most of our actions are to buy time, um, to, to have ed everybody come to that level of understanding, share the knowledge, spread the knowledge, educate others. Um, so it's, it's, I don't think the ratio is improving. The quantity is growing. But I don't think the ratio overall across the, the span of humanity in the world is growing in a positive number um, and in a positive direction, unfortunately. What do you think that we can do to improve that dynamic? Because I agree, I don't see the um, percentages overall shifting. Um, there's still a very tiny percentage of people who really know what's going on. There's an even tinier percentage of people who speak out and attempt to educate others in a moral way. Um, what do you think can be done to, um, you know, improve that dynamic, if any, if anything? Yeah, I've been, I've been thinking about that a lot lately. It's uh, one of the things that I've recognized is myself certainly included uh, and others. Uh, our marketing sucks. <laughs> we don't have a million TikTok followers. Even if we get that million TikTok followers making 99% of the content something stupid, some sort of distraction, and then one percent of the content, there's a little nugget of truth in there, and then working and growing on that one percent nugget. Um, but just being more appealing and being uh, better marketers of the information, maybe in a more fun way, being creative with it. I'm not really sure what it's going to take because I don't, I'm I'm not great in that area myself. So I'm I'm pursuing that for sure as a, an area to improve and to help the dynamic. Um, at the same time, um, podcasting, video, audio. That's not the only way to get the message out. And a lot of people, um, uh, yes, that's, I think that's the most powerful way in a video format. However, a piece of artwork or a poem or just putting together uh, snippets of video of news streams and calling out different contradictions, what have you, teaching history that way, um, those are all very much needed and very important. The more broad uh, types of ways to speak out and types of content to create the better and the more eyeballs, and the more minds we're going to be able to reach because everybody has a different flavor of music. Everybody likes the right. different type of food and um, everybody's going to be appealing um, to a different type of content um, in, in, in music, in art, in podcasting, etc. So the more people that can do that, um, the better in, in various formats. And um, the largely, I think the dynamic is a lot of people don't have... Uh, the belief in themselves that they can do that, that they can affect the change, even if they do understand that that is how change comes about. Um, they're really self, either self-conscious or just don't have the high enough confidence or belief in themselves that they really can have an effect. And I'm, I want to tell them that, yes, you absolutely can, even if it's a small amount. Um, it is greatly needed in these times. I want to speak to that dynamic about uh, people's personal power and, and their their worldview uh, and their view of themselves. But before we get to that, um, let me uh, step back a little bit uh, of uh, an earlier part of your answer there um, is about marketing and reaching out to people and, and getting them in. Now, one of the things that I think that we could do is we could 
attempt to appeal to people with larger audiences than ourselves. So, for example, like if some really big podcasters or really big uh, personalities in uh, a wider aspect of, you know, the the communications world were to bring the idea of natural law into their purview and and then put put it out there for their listening audience their viewing audience imagine how much traction this information could gain and garner in the consciousness of humanity it would it would really only take a few people to push that message out there and bring the people on who want to discuss it and who are already discussing it in their own work. Why do you think that doesn't happen? It's like it just never occurs. It never breaks into that consciousness. What is holding those people back? Are they straight up gatekeepers and know about that? And they're, they're positioned such that they only want to have the discussion go to a certain place and then stop it from there. I tend to think that it is not a, a quote, gatekeeping thing. I tend to think that it is just their ignorance and they're so focused in on the only the, 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 the small, tiny, narrow box that they talk about that their mindset is just never broadened and their horizons are just never broadened into a wider aspect of consciousness such that they are able to recognize, hey, natural law is the solution to this. Objective morality is the solution. We got to get order followers to quit their jobs. We got to teach children from a very young age objective morality so they don't go in government jobs, so they don't go in uh, the police force, so they don't sign up for the military, etc. You know, uh, speak to what you think the, the main dynamic is when it comes to why doesn't this break into mainstream consciousness even through the alternative media? Yeah, I think, um, I think it, it, it was really before shadow banning came in uh, such in a hard fashion i mean you yourself have been victim to that um on youtube and, and what other social medias um that uh, the that were available at the time um but i think a lot of people like i think you said is uh that they're largely still ignorant and they didn't make it to where they are whatever platform they're on whether whatever following they have they didn't make it to where they are talking about natural law, objective morality. So they have found their niche and they think they have made it. And they don't seem to be um, as, uh, not addicted, but as uh, desirous of self-improvement, um, internal improvement. And they think they've made it somehow. And they think they're done. They, they're done. They, they're successful. Um, right. When If they're not talking about natural law and freedom, and don't have the understanding, they, they know that they haven't made it yet. Um, uh, but largely, that's not the case. So, like, if you take uh, Joe Rogan, for example, he's not going to be shadow banned if all of a sudden he starts having uh, discussions about natural law and objective morality and guests on to talk about it. Um, guys that big, um, I know he's had Alex Jones on. I'm sure that's actually helped Alex Jones' uh, uh, viewership uh, and his voice when he got on the show. Um, but largely it's because they think uh, they've made it and they didn't make it by talking about objective morality and natural law. And the spot where they are now is kind of comfortable and they're very dependent on that following for their income, right. for um, their status, for their fame, uh, for their lifestyle, basically. And they're very dependent on that. And they're just going to do more of the same of what they did to get there, unfortunately. And instead of, uh, like I said, self-improvement, internal work, and uh, and teaching natural law and objective morality and, and learning it for themselves, really. It's it's amazing to me that people in um, more influential positions with the general public have not fully made that internal. Uh, awakening in their own awareness that this is what the solution is. And again, um, you know, uh, people will say, oh, uh, how how egotistical are you that you think you know what the solution is? No, 
the, there is a solution, and it is knowable, and I know what it is, and I have known what it is. The, the, the hardest part of it is not learning what the solution is. The hardest part of it is getting the word out about what the solution is to other people and having them fully understand that that is the correct solution. You know, th- this is the, the, the greatest challenge of the, of the one great work is to get other people to make the cognitive, cognitive connection that what you have put forward as the solution is actually factually correct and is the thing that people need to be doing, you know, because this is our problem in the freedom movement. We're scattered all over the place. And and if you ask one million people in the movement, if there are even a million, you know, you ask a million people, you're going to have a spectrum of different responses of what is the actual solution to what we need to be doing to get out of this tyranny. You know, how many people will tell you the solution is a new monetary system? How many people will tell you it's a new technology? How many people will tell you it's a new crypto? How many people will tell you it's growing your own food? How many people will tell you it's getting off grid? You know, it's like we're scattered as to what we actually really need to be doing. And the one underlying foundation that has to come as a central foundational stone, it's got to be the platform, the bedrock, the slab that you build upon is natural law. If people aren't talking about natural law and objective morality, they don't really understand the solution to tyranny because they don't understand the equation that as morality increases, freedom increases, and vice versa. As immorality increases, slavery increases. Um, you know, again, what do you think we have to do to get people to fully internalize that and understand it from, uh, you know, like grokking it, like fully and completely understanding that that's what the solution is? Yeah, I think it's really a um, a study of history, like asking them the main question is how did we get here and really asking that over and over and over and they have an answer and then how do we get there then they have an answer how did we get there and you really all come back to well everyday people me you our neighbors our actions in the past have uh caused where we are today that's right that is the only that is the only way that it ever has happened that is how we have gotten to where we are now every day's Everyday people, our individual actions, summated over the the quantity of the people on Earth, um, have resulted in manifested in our current reality. And people don't really have haven't even looked that far into it. They're, like you said, they're stuck on the monetary system, or they just want to cut off the head of the hydra just for another three to grow back. And um, they don't realize that it is they themselves and their day to day, everyday actions is what uh, manifests that change and actually puts uh, what we want to see into the world. And in the past, people have wanted government. People have wanted slavery for themselves and other people and to control themselves and other people um, in immoral ways. And uh, that is how we've gotten here and that is how you get out of here. And that is how our reality works and manifests. So uh, that question is, uh, how did we get here? And just keep hounding that, hounding that, hounding that. Similar to a shadow work exercise where you ask yourself five whys. Why this? Why that? Why that? Why that? To each answer of the subsequent why. Um, That can uh, do a lot of work, I think, into people's uh, broadening of their perspective and understanding that dynamic of our reality. You know, because it forces them to think about information reaching people. You know, why do people think the way they currently think? They think the way they currently think because that is the information that they've taken in through the course of their life that was given to them by all the people around them, whether it be the media, the school system, their parents, their teachers, their, um, you know, uh, clergy, etc. So, um, you know, they have to make the fundamental recognition that only by us putting out 
more information to reach people's eyes and ears and change the way that they think, to influence and long-term eventually change the way that other people think, that is what changes behavior. And only by behavioral change, as you just stated, are we really going to make a dent in the, the, the tyranny system of the world. You know, if, if we're going to get people to stop complying with tyranny, they have to think differently. And for them to think differently, they have to receive the information. If we're not becoming the media, we are allowing the existing media to program those people's minds. And it doesn't mean we want to be mind programmers and then keep them under our thrall. We want to educate them morally and then take the you know, the so-called reins off, take the foot off the gas pedal and let them take over and go ahead and think for yourself. You know, they have to learn the method of thinking for themselves, which, which is the trivium. They have to get the right information and vet it and understand the, these are the causal factors. And this is what needs to change thought processes, worldview, etc. So, um, you know, let's say, where do you see the dynamic heading as far as education is concerned. Uh, do you see technology assisting in that regard? Uh, you know, do you see um, helping people to learn technology being a, a boon to getting that information out? And where do you see that dynamic heading in the next several years? Yeah, technology is certainly important. Um, it is the, the media of the day, uh, whatever that latest technology is that is critical to learn how to put that out because that's how you're going to reach the most number of people and the most number of minds right. as you just stated and uh so i think that dynamic of educating the the populace on the technology is certainly important you're doing that with your course others are doing that and i think any new type of content coming out needs to be a freedom slash content, freedom slash podcast a freedom slash whatever art piece of art a freedom slash whatever poem if that's not where your foundation is, if that's not the core reason why you're doing what you're doing, then you're not in inflicting change. You're not helping uh, us get to that state of freedom. You're not helping that cause. Right. We're um, not here to I be entertained. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that's what everybody tries to just go right for entertainment or even infotainment, edutainment. Right. This isn't about entertainment. This is about freeing ourselves from tyranny and violence and enslavement. You know, we have to take this pretty seriously, you know, not to say that you can't have any fun along the way, but it's got to be a serious effort. This is not just here to like say, oh, that's interesting and then move on and just take up your place in the slavery system. It's here to say, you know, we really need to learn this, integrate it in our lives, and then change what we're doing, change how we're complying with the existing system of tyranny and not, not comply anymore. Right. Yeah, I always, uh, I always like giving an example of um, any type of distractions like you just laid out and that's not solutions-oriented, that's not educating on objective morality, natural law, true state of freedom. It's like the slaves in the 1800s uh, in the south of America – uh, learning how to bake a cake because one day they might have a house and the house might have an oven but at the end of the day they're still slaves just because they know how to bake a cake or start a garden or whatever um, doesn't make them free right. is not helping towards the solution it's really just largely a distraction to get them through the day and not actually see and recognize the state that they are in and how to get out of that state without a doubt it's as ridiculous as that yeah yeah now, going back to uh, the second part of what we were talking about earlier, um, you, you had mentioned that people don't have the self-confidence. They don't believe in themselves. They don't believe that they're powerful and they can affect change in the world if they become active. You know, nobody's going to affect change in the world if you're not active. You know, if you're not act actively doing something, no change gets done. You know, the ability to change something means you had to put work into it. You had to make an effort. You had to try, right? Most people are just saying things and they're not trying they're not actually doing anything they're not making content they're not trying to reach other people's minds they're just complaining largely you know and i find that this comes from lack of confidence as you said and the lack of confidence comes from lack of competence so one of the things that i try to do in my media course is i try to instill 
confidence in people, but it's not blind confidence. It's not like just uh, confidence for no reason, right? It's confidence that's backed up by competence. So competence comes first, and then there's confidence. And you do need a small modicum of initial confidence, and it's not even really confidence. It's just believing that you will get there, right? You'll get there with proper instruction. You'll get there with practice. You'll get there with time. You'll get there with patience. You'll get there with persistence, right? You you have to work at all those things, but that's that's what will get you to the place of competence, then you're going to have a lot of confidence. So I'd like to ask you as someone who graduated from how to become the true media, you know, what did you think of those sort of life skill dynamics of the class, right? Forget even put the technicals aside for a second and focus on what I tried to teach people about the mental attitude that they have to have going into something like this and the, the, the life skill aspect of how to become the true media. Right. And as you, as you said, uh, the, o- the only way to overcome a fear, the only way to overcome a fear is through knowledge. That's right. If you're afraid to start a podcast, if you're afraid to create a website, if you're afraid to uh, plant a garden, getting more knowledge about those things, reading a book or actually having gnosis and doing it little by little, that's the only way to overcome a fear. It'll totally uh, dispel no the fear. Wrangler. That's right. Yeah. There's no snake wrangler that's afraid of snakes because they understand the nature of the snakes. Um, and uh, as go, going back to the uh, how to become the true media course, in one of your lessons, you actually go through um, when you go through file mapping, you 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 identify a piece of glassware yes. in your kitchen cupboard, <laughs> and uh, you're like, "Tell me the location of this piece of glassware." Right. And you go back to the planet Earth, to the country United States, to to the North American continent, to the country United States, to the state, to the city, to the town, to the street to the actual address, to the location in the house, to the location in that uh, room in the house. And yep. uh, you boil it all the way down. And that's a file uh, system, that right? Allegory. That's a file it's, system. That's the file system. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you got to have the foundational knowledge. And uh, once you understand the file system, you know how then to manipulate and act within that file system right. in, uh, in the ways that you wish. Um, and before, you didn't know how, so you were kind of afraid of it. You didn't know how to go into the root system and to the root user and make changes the way you want. Um, you probably didn't even know that was an option. Right. Um, but now you do going through that, the gaining of knowledge through that process. It's always going to be a function of fear based in ignorance versus the absence of fear or uh, a, a dynamic in consciousness that is love based, based in knowledge. It's always how it's going to work. Ignorance festers fear. Knowledge can bring about a full understanding and ultimately a love based consciousness. That's what it's ultimately all about. Um, so I'll let you take the floor and tell me whatever other dynamics you'd like to discuss for the next several minutes, and we'll do that, and then maybe we could take some phone calls from the viewing audience. How does that sound? Sure. Yeah, I'll, I'd like to touch on the concept of self-confidence and self-belief, mm-hmm. and that one of the ways, the, uh, the only way to overcome fear, as we've been saying, um, is through knowledge. But the really the main way and the quickest way to overcome uh, a lack of confidence is to start start doing small things, taking small steps. The uh, everybody in today's day and age is familiar with the concept of compound interest, economically, financially. Well, that applies to many other different dynamics, right? Apply the law of correspondence in that sense um, with the uh, compounding effect in many other ways of life, many other aspects of life and of yourself. So confidence really does uh, compound on itself. If you learn the file system, then you know how to manipulate files, then you know how to organize files, then you know how to back up files, then you know how to create new files, and then sooner or later you're, you're creating a website and managing stuff on a server. Um, that's applied through different dynamics in your life, different dynamics in yourself, and um, that is the way to overcome a lack of confidence is really by gnosis, by doing and uh, having that compound little by little by little, and uh, the snowball will just keep growing down the mountain. Um, and the, uh, so that, that's a very important concept to, uh, to, to recognize uh, for those who have that lack of confidence and uh, are seeking ways to overcome 
uh, that uh, hurdle. Um, not certainly not a permanent state, just a hurdle. The uh, the other concept that I wanted to bring up is uh, a concept I had a podcast topic on. Uh, that is enlightenment propagation. And uh, being an engineer, I have studied different types of materials and properties of metals and whatnot. Um, and in a lot of materials, glass is a good example. Say, take your, uh, your vehicle's windshield. If you get a, a chip in the windshield and you don't get it fixed, and over time you get hit with more rocks, the wind pressure over time starts to propagate that crack. And you see this in other materials as well, but this is a good visual for most people um, in today's day and age. So this crack keeps propagating and propagating and propagating, but it doesn't really propagate if a stone hits the windshield on the complete other side or if it hits a different window in the car. It really only starts to propagate when force is directly applied to that spot in the windshield. And uh, the concept of uh, crack propagation, I twisted the first word and uh, input a, uh, the word enlightenment. So enlightenment propagation is a concept where I explained Every one of our neighbors, every one of our friends, every one of our family members who aren't enlightened, who aren't doing the great work, who don't know about natural law or, na or objective morality or even what freedom actually truly is and anarchy truly is, um, they, each and every one of them, have their own crack in their system, a chink in their armor, um, if you will. And uh, whether that's in the, the healthcare industry, whether that's in the food system, whether that's in the news stations, whether that's history, whether uh, pick your pick your poison there, and our job as uh, great workers uh, is to find those cracks, those chinks in the armor of our friends, of the people we care about, the ones who we can really uh, directly affect um, and influence. And uh, once we do find that crack, keep 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 picking at it, keep pushing away at it, keep uh, throwing stones at that crack sending them information, different articles to read, bring it up in conversation uh, frequently, and eventually that crack will start to propagate. Their enlightenment will start to propagate out, and eventually the windshield will shatter. Um, that's why I like the name of last year, one of last year's conferences, Shattering the Illusion, right? So shatter that windshield um, in our day-to-day -day actions with these people, interacting these people, educating these people, um, our friends and family, the people we love to really propagate out that crack that they have of whatever aspect it is of the current system that they have a little bit of uh, knowledge about and, uh, and see the chink in the armor. Um, so those are the two concepts that I would like to, uh, to, to have people think about um, after the podcast and, and act in their daily lives. Absolutely great point there, Jeff. And, you know, there are so many endpoints. I mean, you could literally pull on just about any thread and unravel yeah. the tapestry of the control system in people's minds if you work at it enough. And, you know, this is what we simply have to uh, inspire people to do uh, is get active, talk to people. Um, formalize your work and put it out online so that other people can benefit from it. Um, you know, the name of your very documentary night, Inquire and Inspire. You know, ask questions and then try to inspire others. You know, re reach people's minds, help to influence and change them for the better. That's what we are here to do for ourselves and each other. So, um, Jeff, uh, I think that's a, a great place to leave the formal part of the discussion. And I'd like you to give uh, all of the uh, online resources where people can find any and all of your work. And then uh, let's go to the phones after that. What do you think? Sounds great. Great. Yeah, my main website is uh, gooff.com, G-O-A-U-F.com. Uh, can, everybody can find my page on the One Great Work Network, Jeff Hipoff. Uh, so it's One Great Work Network slash Jeff dash Hipoff. Um, inquireandinspire.com for my monthly documentary, Movie Nights. Uh, in Oaks, PA at Arnold's Family Fun Center. FarmFinderPA.com is my community-sourced uh, directory of local farms and food sources in the state of Pennsylvania. And uh, I also have a line that is quickly growing of soaps and toothpaste and balms. Um, that is going to be at HappyHomeAndBody.com as a supplemental income stream for me, hopefully, to one day get out of the day job system um, that I am currently in. So it's always a progress, and everybody's at different starting points, and that's where I currently am, and I'm working towards getting out and uh, exercising my, uh, my entire uh, source of income through the counter economy and parallel systems outside of government. 
Excellent. Awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, Jeff, Jeff Hipoff, check him out at GoOff.com, G-O-A-U-F.com, and on the One Great Work Network content creator page. Let's, uh, let's go to the callers and see what they have to bring up. Let's hear from Conrad. Conrad, you are live on What on Earth is Happening with my special guest, Jeff Hipoff. Welcome. Hey, hey, Mark. Hey, Jeff. Uh, I've really enjoyed getting to hear from you and uh, just this series with the different content creators in general. Uh, the reason I called is because I wanted to talk about the dynamic of confidence, too. Uh, myself, I'm also not somebody who ever wanted to be in front of the camera, in front of the microphone. But what inspires it in me is just rem reminding myself that these people we're up against, they have all the confidence and it's completely unfounded. All these people that are so sure of themselves, these narcissists, they, they shouldn't have that. They should be, you know, they should be cowering in the corner. And us who represent the truth, we're the ones who need to speak up and get up there. So that's right. That's really just the decision we have to make, even if it's it counterintuitive or unpleasant at first. I fully agree. Uh, you know, uh, the dynamic is reversed. It's it's a form of inversion. The people who should not be confident because they're not standing in the truth and they're doing immoral behaviors shouldn't have that type of confidence but they do because they're currently um you know in control of the the largest platforms and technology and they also have tons of uh financial resources that they can use to influence people to do whatever they ask them to do and that creates that sense of artificial uh you know not truly uh, deserved confidence, but nonetheless, it puts it there in their mindset. And people tend to think, uh, who are on the side of the truth, um, you know, oh, it's just little me, little us. What, what do we have? What, what resources and power do we have? Well, guess what? You have the biggest power at your disposal. Because if you're standing in the truth, there's no bigger sense of power and bigger sense of protection than that. That's number one. Number two is with a little bit of knowledge, you're going to gain your skill sets. You're going to, you're going to have skill sets under your belt. You're going to have um, competence in what you're doing and then you're going to slowly build your outreach and that will make your confidence snowball from there. Jeff, your take on that. Yeah, I mean, everybody who can ride a bike, the first time you rode a bike, you probably fell once or twice. And uh, like Conrad mentioned, it's, it's going to be painful in the beginning. You're going to get things wrong. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to mess up. But the things that you do get right will have that compounding snowballing effect. And over time, you'll get less things wrong. And uh, you become way more competent in your work and whatever that is uh, that you're trying to learn. Without a doubt. Conrad, you're a content creator as well. And uh, we're going to be bringing you on to uh, One Great Work Network. And, um, you know... Uh, you know, speak to the dynamic as like, what do you see um, as far as people's ability to um, learn how to put their voice out there online and, you know, utilizing the, the, the technology that we have at our disposal that we have to actually, you know, employ while we have it at our disposal, you know, um, what, what kind of ways do you think that we can, you know, leverage that and get people inspired to, to, to come on board and actually, you know, formalize more material and then put it out there online so that other people can learn from it? Did we lose Conrad? Well, Jeff, I'll I ask you that. that oh, these yeah, go ahead. Here. There you go. Go ahead. Hear me? Yes. Because you're actively yeah, in, involved right now uh, in, in creating content, it's, am I correct? Definitely. And with these tools, you know, um, it's like with a, I do construction too for my day job. So mm -hmm. just like with power tools, you're afraid to touch it at first, but right. you're afraid to try new things. But um, with technology, it's the same, same idea. Just get over the fear of not knowing how to use that you know uh, most people don't even use a mouse you know they they're on the phone they're on the laptop that's right so you have to try your hand at all this different stuff try different things of doing it you know i took the how to become the true media and 
that opened up a lot for me. Excellent. You know, so, so you just have to really get out of your comfort zone. Without a doubt, uh, people have to be afraid. Uh, stop being afraid to try and to experiment. Jeff, d d I mean, you know, when you first started, obviously, you're not going to be an expert at anything. You're going to have to g go through those learning pains, right? And, and you're going to have to fail, right? People are so afraid to fail that they don't try. You know, uh, speak to the the dynamic of. You know, how do you see failure? Do you see failure as a, a, a teacher? And how do people overcome their fear of failing th that is holding them back from even trying? Like what, what techniques or practices do you think they can employ to try to get over that, uh, you know, that, that hump? Yeah, I think uh, just from my own personal anecdotes about uh, failing, um, early days of starting my website, I think uh, there was some sort of plugin update or a WordPress update, and it broke the theme that I was using. I forget exactly what happened, but I pretty much couldn't figure out how to get my website back that I had created and was almost done with. So I started from scratch um, at once again. So uh, that was not a good feeling, and that was uh, a lot of time poured into that first iteration. And since then, I've had podcasts recorded and then uh, not save properly or the file gets corrupted in some way and uh, you lose that entire recording. You have to start over again and it, it freaking sucks and it's not fun, um, but it is just part of the learning curve. That's, that's a lot of times how you learn right. um, when things do go wrong. So to help people uh, get started and start to go overcome that a little bit, it's really uh, simplifying your next step. Uh, just taking a very small next step Really think about what you want to do and uh, simplify that as much as you can and just do that one little thing. Then you don't have to worry about that anymore. It's just one less thing off your plate and then you focus on the next and the next and the next and eventually it adds up and, uh, and you're doing the thing that you set out initially to do based on the completion of all your little baby steps. So right. that's an important thing to do is to really focus on what's the next thing and uh, try and simplify that so it's uh, not complicated and uh and you can you can do it and as you were saying it's like a compounding effect you learn a little bit and then you build on top of those existing skill sets it's just like what on earth is happening podcast right you sure. listen to podcast number one and you get that knowledge under your belt you might look at other resources and you know vet that information read some books then you go to podcast number two and then three and then before you know it you're going to have a, a, a tremendous wealth of knowledge at your fingertips and you're going to have a, a worldview that has expanded considerably and you're even going to get confidence to turn other people onto this and even teach it to others so it's like you have to simply begin once you begin those skill sets will will compound and they will snowball and yeah, I think uh, yeah. in your podcast, I, I remember some callers, uh, I forget which episodes, but it was during the uh, Cosmic Abandonment series, mm -hmm. and they had asked some questions about your, your topics and your, your content in that series, and I think you posed the question to them, have you listened to all the prior content? And they were like, no, this is my first call, this right. is my first episode, right. and it's like, why are you starting at cosmic abandonment? You didn't start the You're podcast. You're starting at the end the instead of the beginning. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And uh, so you structured it in just that same manner to uh, build the foundational knowledge and work up from there. Right. And you don't just jump into uh, uh, driving a car one day. Uh, you, you learn about the road, you learn about the different signals, you learn about the different controls, you learn about right. the computer if you're trying to create a podcast, you learn about the file system. So you don't just jump into recording. And right. I think only in the last couple of weeks of your How to Become the True Media course do we really get into the final outputting sure. uh, content uh, and everything building Audio up to that. Audio and video just, comes come toward forward. the end of the seminar, you know, not the very yeah. end, but toward the, the end, like maybe two, over two thirds to three quarters through because there's so much prerequisite knowledge to have to understand, you know, and to go, to go back to even that dynamic of failure and how people are afraid to fail. It's like, how many times do I even still stumble? And it's, it's not always user error. Sometimes it's developer error, right? Sometimes it is user error. Okay. You know, 
In moving things, I inadvertently plugged a network cable into the wrong port. When a jumble of network cables and you know a bunch of switches and a router, and I misplaced one cable, and you know a server was offline for a day until I found it. So I had to go trace cables and unplug it, plug it into the right port. It's problem solved. You know, problems happen. Mistakes. No one is perfect. Mistakes will be made. You will fail at doing things. You know, uh, I finally figured out the thing that was probably causing the problems with the start of the show over the past several weeks due to the developer of the app that I use for streaming changing the setting that I did not change. Right. So and of all things, it's a, a hardware encoder setting. So imagine that. Right. We're not talking about like an interface tweak. Right. The, the developer in the new version that I upgraded to. And this is nested way down in sub menus like you got to uncollapse things, open up modal windows and stuff like that. And then. In that setting, that nested setting, they changed a hardware encoder setting mm -hmm. and changed the default. And I thought it was still set to the way I had set it. So, to, you know, today, I'm looking through all of this. I set it today to the way I wanted it. The show's perfect. It's, it went off without a hitch today with no hiccups or interruptions. And again, this is why software is so important. This is why development is so important. I have to do a whole other show on development, software development, uh, the mindset of developers. And maybe I'll try to find a developer you know, to talk with and do a show on because if we don't understand how interconnected software development is to freedom, you know, it's the main technology Software is what every single solitary podcast that I've ever put out was put out through software. Software made that happen, okay? And if we don't have and maintain and work with developers and build a relationship with them to build and maintain better software, the job of a content creator in this whole field of endeavor becomes harder and harder. And as you can see... You don't give up. You keep looking for ways to improve it. Even if it fails, you keep going. You don't stop. You just keep going and keep doing it. That's part of the life lesson of everything that's taught here and what on earth is happening, but specifically what I try to teach and how to become the true media. Let's hear from uh, another content creator of One Great Work Network, Fred Gingras. Fred, you are live on What on Earth is Happening with our special guest, Jeff Hipoff. Welcome. Hey, thank you, uh, Mark, for being the call. And um, I, 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 I was inspired by your conversation. Um, that Jeff, um, this is where I'm going now. I'm into uh, building a conference with uh, three other people. And it's gonna happen on 25th of March, and it's it's gonna be exclusively French. Nice. So things are yes, I I I we're we're starting to get things happen. Um, it has been a rough ride, but uh, to find to find people that are that were um, uh, that they have the heart at the good place, and um, when you have them, you keep them like close to you. Um, I I. I enjoy uh, the great work um, because it's very empowering and all these things that you were talking about, Jeff, are really true um, heart-based feelings that most people wish they have. And it, it's not easy. It's not a, a, a easy path to take. And uh, I, I made mistakes in my podcast. And I'm still doing some some uh, little mistakes, but you're getting better and you're getting more comfortable talking with the people, and uh, and it's very very uh, enlightening and empowering to share this knowledge with people. And uh, I I I see I see how important the great work is by the way we're doing things. It's not only 
learning things by heart, but it, it's doing things. And and I mean, you're doing it. I'm I'm doing a podcast, so uh, it's 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 not like having a whole network, but essentially it's it's, it's building one. I have the 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 motto of, of if you a good leader is a leader who creates more leader. Um, so this is the mindset I have about it. I want to get I want the people to really uh, uh, put their will into it. Uh, for for the, the search for the search on on truth and the occult and I'm I'm um, I, I'm I'm getting it's getting better on the French side. If we touch one percent of the people, I would be I would be happy with it. Awesome, Fred. Thank you for that, Jeff. Your take on everything Fred just said, especially when it comes to uh, organization to bring people together. I know this is something that you're personally involved with, and you've helped make uh, the two masks same face presentation happen. Uh, so, uh, your response to everything Fred brought up there? Yeah, you got to keep powering through, and uh, the. European population, um, just getting the uh, temperature gauge from listening to your show, Mark, over the years, uh, has not been great. Um, and the society over there manifests and shows just as much. So what Fred's doing, uh, targeting a French audience, is awesome. Is uh, I awesome agree. to see. And uh, it's really just about hard grit, hard work, determination knowing what needs to be done and fighting through that. And it seems like Fred is, uh, has gone through a lot of that and you've, uh, are now putting together a full on conference. Uh, and that's going to be awesome. I'm sure. And, uh, much needed and, uh, showing as a leader yourself, showing the way for others to do the same in their parts of the world. Excellent. Fred, uh, could you please tell people the name of the conference? And if you have a URL, share that with our audience, please. Uh, I think you're muted, Fred. You can unmute yourself. So there you go. Uh, you're breaking up. Try again. It looks like, unfortunately, he's having audio difficulties. Uh, no worries, Fred. When uh, you have that, just let us know, and uh, we'll definitely pr uh, promote that. All right, let's hear from. Who do we have waiting here? Let's hear from Sarah. Sarah, you're live on What on Earth is Happening with my special guest, Jeff Hipoff. Welcome. Sarah, you're muted. Go ahead and unmute yourself, please. All right, I'll move on. Let's hear from Jennifer. Jennifer, you're live on What on Earth is Happening with my special guest, Jeff Hipoff. Welcome. So, folks, when I call on you, be ready to unmute. You have to roll over the call window with your mouse or pointing device and hit the microphone to unmute yourself in the call Hello. window. There you go. I have a question regarding, uh, do you think this will end in a physical combat uh, your question is, do you think war. that this is leading to war? Yes, war. Like okay. hands-on, physical combat, assassination, Jeff, your elimination. Ta your take on that is the situation that we are in heading to a physical warfare scenario or physical combat scenario. Uh, my question back is, who's fighting on the <clears throat> sides, like each side? Are you going to fight uh, a couple hundred or a couple thousand scattered across the world, uh, even lacking in fundamental values against millions and trillions? Um, I don't see that actually as a war at all. Um, how, we need more people to start a war. How many sorcerers do you have? How many people do have power over? So if you only have a couple hundred people, you really are not that, that slow, are you? She broke up a little bit, I'm sorry. Yeah, it was difficult to hear, but it's basically saying if, if you only have a few hundred people, um, 
you know, she, I guess she was saying, is is it um, more advantageous or less? It is what I made from it, but it broke up so much it was very difficult to understand the question. Uh, I think there's just bandwidth issues going on there. But, um, you know, my take on it is it has inexorably heading towards some type of a combat scenario or warfare scenario. That's what always happens when uh, communication, morality, teaching breaks down. Uh, it does not mean that that will be a successful scenario. Um, was the American Revolution long-term successful? The American Revolution wasn't long-term successful for a number of reasons. Uh, they let off the gas pedal too early, as far as I'm concerned, and left 80% uh, Tories in the country uh, to fester and breed and uh, plot and plan and, you know, uh, unfortunately uh, didn't press the war as I think that they should have. Secondly, um, they didn't morally educate the remaining population enough. Uh, look, at the, look at the morals of the population of America now. While it's probably still one of the highest consciousness, if not the highest consciousness country on earth, which is sad, um, you still have a largely immoral population. I'd say at least uh, two-thirds to 75% immoral, if not much higher. And for people who completely understand objective morality, it's far, far less. You know, you have a general moral population of maybe about 20%, if that. But for people who understand natural law completely, forget about it. It's less than a percent. So we didn't do our job morally educating the populace after the American Re Re Revolution, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, Jeff, your, your take on that and, uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> how you see things playing out, possibly going in the direction of kinetic uh, warfare, uh, possibly between just, let's say, sides that represent people who want to be free versus people who want to continue the enslavement system. Yeah, well, I know for sure that can be the ones initiating the violence, right? It's, it's uh, going to be a last grasp, hope, and uh, a last uh, control of the world and the people who wish to. And uh, it's, it, that's the only way that we have. Fears aren't even close to each other on the side of that uh, possible kinetic conflict. And, you know, not much of a conflict. And that, that's what it work now is connect conflict or work now is Jeff, your your audio is now breaking up as well. Um, maybe we can just try to reestablish it. Um, can you uh, hang up on the call and come back in? Because uh, I'm, yeah, there you go. And just come on back in. I'll switch over. I'm back, Mark. All right. You're much better sound-wise. Let's get get your video going, and I'll bring you back. <clears throat> you are break ever out all ever things you know. All right, hold on one moment. I'm going to leave and come back into the call-in room. I apologize for that, folks. Again, problems occur with with bandwidth and connections, and you just have to be persistent and stick. With it, let's see if we have Jeff back now. Hold on a moment. All right, Jeff, can you hear me now? Yeah, that's much clearer. Much that better. Like okay, so looks like that bandwidth issue was on my laptop. There we go. You're back. Uh, continue with what you were saying before the uh, sound broke up. Yeah, I was saying it started, uh, in terms of a kinetic... Uh conflict in the future, uh, the numbers would need to be much closer. It's not going to be much of a conflict. Exactly. And I know for damn sure we're not going to be the ones initiating that right. conflict. It would either be in self-defense or started from a, a last grasp, last ditch effort for those who wish to control others on this planet. Right. And um, that's why our main efforts now isn't kinetic conflict, isn't uh, going out and sabotaging the system in a physical way. It is trying to peacefully morally educate the minds and help others around the world 
uh, do the same and uh, and just really stop doing the actions right. that result in the place that we currently are and, and continue to do the actions that will only uh, result in a state of freedom. Right now, this is the battleground. Make no mistake about it. The battleground is in the mind of humanity, and that's where we have to wage it right now um that being to said that point I, yes. that's why i'm wearing this shirt there Come you go take it that's your, right <laughs> mind on it. So that's where it is <laughs> you know that being said we are already under uh duress we are already under violence we are already um actually under physical attack you know if you look at the poisoning of the food and water supply that's a physical attack you know if you look at the taxation system People would say that's not a physical attack, but it is because they will come and take you if you refuse to pay them. You know, if you don't pay property taxes, they'll come and take your property. You know, things like that um, already constitutes uh, physical uh, assault and duress against the body and the fruits of the labor of an individual, and that's violence. So, you know, of course, uh, peaceful people who are uh, just simply do not want rulers uh, would not initiate uh, any ki kind of physical conflict because that would constitute violence. The problem is we're already under an initiation of physical attack and violence, even if people can't see it at their level of consciousness. Violence is already, the threat of violence is always implied. So if the threat of violence is always either verbally or even non-verbally implied, where you know if you don't comply with someone else's demands, they're going to do physical violence unto you, that is the state known as duress. I did an entire presentation on it called Duress, Dissidence, and Deadly Force uh, years ago at the Truth Mind Reality Conference in Arizona. And this is the dynamic I was trying to get across to people. So, thank you for that call, Jennifer. Let's hear from. <clears throat> Let's hear from uh, Lisa. Lisa, you are live on What on Earth is Happening with my special guest, Jeff Hipoff. Go right ahead. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yes, we can. Amazing. Um, thanks for another great show. Um, I totally agree. It's a, I definitely feel like we're in the war already there isn't necessarily something like worse coming later like this right. is pretty bad yeah we're in it um i've been um because i'm i'm relatively new at this but um i had i've been working on it sort of a strategy um well it's your strategy actually the maven targeting from uh, you were talking about a lot of yes. a while ago um and um it's one thing I, I mean, I, I can't say I've had like huge um, success, but I do feel like it's moving in the right direction. Um, I've just like uh, I started a Substack, and it was it was kind of just um, because I was writing an article that was related to free speech, and it was around like um, one of the one of the political prisoners uh, that we have in Canada here, um, and that like the the person in that community like they they really appreciated it it's just there's so much censorship like a lot of people just didn't even know about the situation and anyway so just being in contact with with those people and they have a big audience so it's like um and now they're, they're so that I, that was the form of uh what you're what uh you said that you followed the strategy i laid out called maven targeting they had a lot of influence in their community is what you were saying um, well, like none of the, this wasn't like, well, like it wasn't planned out, but that's just kind of how it ended up being like, because I, I wrote, to, I was inspired to write an article, um, about what was going on with, with this particular person. And because I did that, um, they're kind of, um, more interested in listening to other things that I have to say, you know, Got it. It, it's, it's like networking in, in a weird way where there's like just different little groups and we can sort of see where we can help each other out. Um, we're, never, we're rapidly like, running out of time. I'm going to let Jeff respond to that uh, basic strategy that you're talking about. Jeff, your take on that. We have about one minute left. Sure. Yeah. We had touched on that earlier talking about targeting uh, the large social media following content creators. Mm -hmm. Um, that would be a, a, an example of Maven targeting as well if they're an expert in their field and their community. 
And uh, as Mark has said in past podcasts uh, on that topic and on that dynamic, um, focusing efficiently on how to affect the most amount of positive change. And a lot of that is looking at the leaders of the community, which are the mavens. And uh, it, it can be a positive strategy, and uh, it has worked in instances around the world, not just related to natural law and freedom, but to other dynamics. And uh, people tend to follow uh, the confidence and the uh, competence uh, of those people, of those mavens. So it's a very powerful strategy if we can employ it properly. Jeff, your final thoughts? Uh, no, I just want to say it's a it's a real pleasure and real honor to be on the show, Mark. I uh, I've listened to all of the episodes over the years and listening live now for a few episodes, and uh, it's it's a real pleasure. And uh, I said it the other night at a restaurant. Um, uh, you you've helped raise me and so many others around the world, and uh, that's what the great work is, and uh, inspiring others to do the same thing. And uh, I hope everybody uh, is shooting for that. And uh, the goal is to be uh, in a state of freedom with zero slavery. That's, That's right. what it's all about. Ladies and gentlemen, Jeff Hipoff, check him out. Gooff.com, G-O-A-U-F.com, and on the One Great Work Network. That's all the time we have for this edition of What on Earth is Happening, everyone. We'll see you right here next week. And remember, government is slavery.